Hi, today on Mi Gente Mi Dente, we have UTESCA faculty member, Dr. Huber, and today we're gonna to ask him just a few questions about oral cancer. Hi, Dr. Huber. Hi, Stephanie. Today, I wanted to know, uh, what role does a dentist or hygienist play in the diagnosis of oral cancer? Well, as you know, as we talk about it in class, the dentist plays, I think, the most important role ever because they're most likely the one in position to pick this up in an early stage. As, as we discussed, patients often come to the dentist on a routine basis every six months if we're fortunate. And so we have an opportunity to do that oral cancer screen as part of our soft tissue exam, which we normally do. And we may pick something up long before they have signs or symptoms of oral cancer that they are aware of. If they don't choose to see us or they don't come to us regularly, they will often develop symptoms from swallowing, pain, or something, they may go to their dentist, we discovered later at that stage, or they may go to their primary provider and they go, oh, you need to see somebody, and they've been diagnosed later down the stage, if you will. So it's important for us to keep our eyes and mind open to look for oral cancer when we have a patient in the chair. Okay, excellent. Um, how important would you say a dental provider is in being able to identify signs and symptoms that would help increase uh, the probability of well, I mean, that ties in with your first question. If indeed the patient comes to see us, we as a profession need to do our best to make sure we discover it. We have an opportunity to examine that patient, so let's take advantage of that, do what we're supposed to do with a good soft tissue examination, extra oral, intra oral to discover early subtle signs that may indicate an underlying cancer. So it's critical for us to do our job. And can you tell us a little bit of, for our viewers out there, what are some common sites? that oral cancer can occur. Oh, no, well, oral cancer can occur anywhere in the mouth, actually. But the most prevalent sites, obviously, are going to be the floor of the mouth, the lips, the lateral tongue. But more importantly today, the posterior aspect of the oral cavity, the oral pharyngeal area, the posterior uh, tonsillar pillar areas, the base of the tongue areas. Sometimes we can actually see the pharyngeal wall. You may see some signs back there. So. The farther back we can get a good view of, the better it is, because that's the growth area for oral pharyngeal carcinoma as we understand it today, the demographic. Okay, and what are some signs and symptoms as well as risk factors that our viewers should be aware of? Okay, typical signs and symptoms that the patient are going to be aware of are going to be pain. They may notice that they have an ulceration that's not healed, but often they don't. So pain, swallowing difficulty, some tightness in their throat, uh, scratchiness, irritation in the throat that doesn't clear up over a period of time. You know, it's very common in San Antonio with allergies, so if that's continuing, they need to be assessed uh, because those can be the common signs. Also a mass. Um, risk factors, obviously the three most predominant risk factors continue to be tobacco exposure, mainly smoking, alcohol exposure, and the new one is HPV. It's been around for a while, but it's definitely had an uptick over the last couple of decades. More and more HPV associated carcinoma is being diagnosed. And again, that ties into that posterior pharyngeal area because that's where that tends to reside. So we have to be very careful and look for that. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Stephanie. Promote the good odds. Yes. And so, signs and symptoms and risk factors, please be aware of that. Um, dental providers, this is an excellent opportunity for you to catch these signs and symptoms early. Save a life.